Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with the On 4K Pro Box. I figured I would do a follow-up video because a lot of you wrote in with some interesting questions and ideas for me to check out, so I thought I would roll up some of those suggestions and make a full video about it. So in this video, we will explore the USB port, the Wi-Fi performance, and a few other things as well. And before we get into this, I do want to remind you that in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this box can do with some of the extra things we throw at it. All right, let's start off with the basics and work our way up from there. This is an external DIY drive enclosure I reviewed a while back that supports NVMe SSDs. Inside, I've got a one terabyte drive that is formatted for XFAT, and I have it connected via a USB-C to USB-A so that I could plug it into the USB port on the back of the on box. And sure enough, it came up here and was detected successfully. So XFAT is going to work with this device. Not every Android device likes XFAT, but this one is able to work with it. I'm also gonna take a look at VLC, which is a video player and I have a video file on the drive here that we can play back. This is my daughter's piano recital from 2020, I think, and if I fast forward here a little bit, you can see that it starts up and is playing just fine, and I can move through the video here relatively quickly. Uh, all is good playing off the USB hard drive. So if you were looking to have some local media on an external device play via VLC or something similar, I think you will have a good experience with that. So all good so far. Let's take a look at plugging an Ethernet device into that USB port now. Now, as I mentioned in the original video, the Ethernet on the On 4K Pro, while welcomed, is only 100 megabits per second. I would have preferred a gigabit adapter. So I found this adapter in my box of stuff. And that box is quite full these days. You should see what else is in there. Uh, so this has a gigabit Ethernet on the end along with a USB hub, and it plugs right into a USB-A port. This plays very nicely with Android devices. I did plug in a few other Ethernet adapters, and it's hit or miss as to whether or not they're going to work. So I can't advise which one is going to work versus which one doesn't. So if you've got a few laying around, plug them in and see what happens. But this one uh, from Ugreen is working just fine. And what we're going to do real quick here is run a speed test. And I apologize for this being on the side of the screen, but that's how this gets formatted. Now, remember before, we were only getting about 100 megabits per second. Now we're getting a little bit more, twice that actually. Uh, so not quite gigabit speeds here. So this USB port, which is labeled as a USB 3 port, is giving us about USB 2.0 speeds. And I did let the upload speed finish up here. And as you can see, we're getting about... 300 megabits in each direction. That is still three times faster than what we got off the native ethernet, but not quite up to gigabit speed. But you will get a little bit more if you plug in one of these USB devices. Now on the topic of bandwidth, I thought we would take a look at its Wi-Fi performance. Now in the original video, I talked about it, but didn't show it. So why don't we show it now and see how it performs. Now I've got the box connected to my Wi-Fi 6 access point, which is maybe I don't know, six feet over there in the ceiling. So we're gonna see how this does over Wi-Fi 6, which is its maximum wireless configuration. We'll click the go button here and see how we do. Now remember, I'm on a 10 gigabit symmetrical connection here at the house, but as you can see, it's actually doing better than it did in my initial testing here. So we're getting about 370 megabits per second downstream. The upstream before was doing a little better, and here again, it is doing better as well. So we're getting better than Ethernet speeds on the upstream and about what we saw on the USB Ethernet on the downstream. So uh, usually I recommend people plug these things into the network with a hard wire, at least for reliability. But if you were looking for maximum bandwidth here, I think the Wi-Fi is going to be the better route. Let's take a look now and see how GeForce Now runs off of the Wi-Fi because one thing people pointed out to me in my initial review where I showed it was locking up, we had it connected to the Ethernet, not to the Wi-Fi. So let's take a look and see if it does any better. All right, so we loaded the game up here and we are already frozen up after just a few seconds of gameplay. On the Ethernet, I got a minute or two. Here, just seconds. So I'm not gonna recommend this one for GeForce Now game streaming. It just simply 
can't keep up with that. Now, another question I got was about webcams and whether or not these would work off the USB port. And the answer is yes, it actually works. Take a look here. I set up a little Google Meet call and I'm calling my phone and the image you see on the phone is coming from the webcam that's up on top of the monitor here. I'm not getting a great frame rate here, as you can see. It looks like maybe about 15 frames per second or so, but it does seem to work. And if you wanted to have a call with somebody uh, from the uh, webcam here, you could make that work, I suppose. But Zoom is not installable on here. I couldn't get Google Meet to work outside of just a direct call. So there's a lot of limitations. You might be able to sideload Zoom onto this, but it doesn't look like Zoom is making this available for this class of device. So conferencing is possible, just not all that feasible. Now, the last question I got was whether or not this would work with a DAC, which is a device that delivers higher quality audio than what you might get out of the box itself. And I did try hooking up my sound blaster here, and I was not able to get any audio to come out of this. I even went into developer mode to try to figure out a way to shoehorn it. And I would suspect that the speaker on the top of this might be why it doesn't work because it must have some custom audio routing to have the speaker work at some times and the display audio to work at others. So if you were looking to hook a DAC up to this, I don't think it's going to work. At least it hasn't in my testing. So that will do it for this update on the On 4K Pro Box. Just a couple of things that I didn't cover in the original video that you were curious about. If you got more questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And if I get enough, we'll do another update on this. But I think the judgment on this is that it's a very good consumer box, very reasonably priced, but I don't think it's something, again, that consu uh, enthusiast consumers will uh, want to pursue versus an NVIDIA Shield or something much more robust. But all in, a very nice and surprising offering from Walmart. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.